April 19th is always there. It's always in the background. Sometimes it's a distant noise and it's faint and sometimes it's right at the forefront. Well, I used to say it's just like it happened yesterday and as I've came farther along in the healing process, it's like it was maybe last week now. It's important to have family members, survivors, rescuers continually be involved. It's honestly a very em emotional filled perspective because we were there, we went through it. We never want to lose that perspective and that voice. Been a trustee here for several years and I kind of look at that from a survivor standpoint as almost like your civic duty to vote. It's always in the back of your mind those certain little things that trigger a thought or a person. You know, they'll be with you the rest of your life. Trustees come from a wide variety of backgrounds and interests and experience. And working together, people with different perspectives and diversity of thought always comes up with a better answer. There's lots of ways to help. I think being an advocate when you're out in the community and reminding people on how we're funded and why we're funded. Our story is so relevant just because the all the different situations that are here. It's not just about April 19th, 1995. It's about how to deal with terrorism, how to deal with adversity, how to overcome. That's one thing I think the memorial does and needs to continue to do is to provide that context to people. If we're going to be relevant, uh, you, you ask earlier about relevance, we've got to be uh, changing. I, I see that in my work in higher education. We spend a lot of time talking about and actually getting the trustees together to lay out a strategic plan for the future, talk about what the lessons learned were, how we were going to apply them, how we were going to use that to teach uh, young people today about these valuable lessons of actions having repercussions. There's such large needs for this organization that it's pretty easy to find where your personal skill set may fit in. Very easily you can shrink back and think, oh wow, you know, I don't really have as much to offer as maybe another person does. Find an area or two of, of your, your what you're most interested in and, and jump in and get involved with it. You may not be the person that can just go out single-handedly and bring in a million dollars donation for something, but you have something you can give and you will, you will find that in yourself. It's been the most fulfilling and satisfying organization that I've been associated with. It's certainly not passive board service. There are a lot of activities and endeavors from the philanthropy and, and the fundraising component to uh, the educational outreach to the exhibits. We've worked together with common resolve to defeat the evil attack against us. We can it's hard to dabble in it though because it sucks you in, because it's so compelling. Yeah, you know, I run the half marathon every year it's an event that if you haven't been at the start of that marathon, you've probably missed a significant part of people's lives in Oklahoma City. When that mass of 20,000 runners go quiet for the 168 seconds of silence, it, it's something everybody in Oklahoma City should experience. This marathon has become a symbol of the hope and a symbol of moving forward, which is so much a part of what the memorial was all about. There's a point in time in that marathon where it's all you, and you gotta dig deep. And that's exactly what each of us go through in our own lives and our own struggles. As a memorial and, and trustees still need to be resilient, we still need to uh, respond to whatever comes up. Literally every time I'm here, I see something new. I see something interactive. You can't simply say that this is a segment of our history that's frozen in time. No one can leave here without being very personally and very emotionally touched. 
it's awfully important to remind people on what occurred here, but also what that recovery and response was after that. I want the memorial to continue to be something that the 168 and their families would be proud of, and I think, I think it is, and I think they are. You know you're doing, trying to make the best decision in their remembrance, you know, in honoring them. It's the hope, the stories of hope, how we came together, how resilient that we were, that we are, that we continue to be. But this whole no notion of resilience and resolve and moving forward, it stands for something. And today we need more things that stand for something. It's just a really peaceful place. It's a good place for people to just relax and think. I've gained a lot more than I've given.